Bunning strikes again. I uh, <laughs> go in there with my wife. She had to get some stain for um, a cabinet that w or chest of drawers that we're going to be redoing, cleaning up for my son. And of course, knowing me, I head straight over to the lock section and end up spending $44.20 on some locks. And uh, yeah, really sad to say, purchased the master lock. $16.50, don't ever go at me and say a combination master lock. Don't have one, wanted to give it a go. But picked up another combination lock, one that I haven't seen. I've never seen anyone use these. Um, and it's a slider. So this is the lock here. Pop it down there for a sec. It is by Zenith Pad Lock, Pad Bolts, sorry. Combination slide bolt. Uh, powder coated for external use. Blah, blah, blah. As you can see, and the bit we all want to find out, made in Taiwan, not China, that makes change. Um, so choose the right finish, stainless steel for the corrosion protection, I got the black because everyone likes black, moderate, but there is no security rating on it, but um... It does say warning, always wear eye protection, so maybe this lock self-destructs or something. But anyway, um, the one main thing I do not like about locks like these, and you see the ones similar to these sliding locks where people put a padlock on, on shed doors and stuff like that. I don't like these. I'd rather see a chain and a padlock just because these are a lot easier you screw them into a wooden door, you can just undo two screws, slide that out, and then you've got the door open. Put it on the inside, it's probably a bit better. Um, or if you pop rivet it, it's easy enough just to drill with a battery power drill. Drill the two rivet, pop rivets out, slide that off, and you're in. One thing I don't like about these types of locks, but I got it for the combination i've never seen one of these with combination um it comes factory reset with all zeros but i uh changed the code on it so it's not going to work with all zeros because there's no fun in that get rid of that bit no fun um and when i before i reset it I was having a look and I was trying to find the gauge. Couldn't feel any. It was a bit weird. But um, put tension down on the bar. And it's moving and getting lower sounding clicks. And then every time I hit the zero, it gave a really loud click. I thought, well, maybe that's it. And I changed the combination. Tried it again. Didn't work. Didn't get any different sounding clicks. Change the combination on this one. You just got to slide this little tab forwards, hold it there, set the combination you want when it's open, and then let that go back and a uh, new combination set. So let's see if we can uh, decode this one. So I've kind of forgotten what code I put on it. And I'm going to use my brand new Sparrows. Decoder, which I kind of bent because I only put it in my pocket and forgot about it. But uh, it's nice and thin, perfect for these. So normally with these, one side you can fit your decoder in a lot easier. Which for this happens to be the top, but there is no gates at the top at all. They're all on the bottom of it. Now. In this part here, I could not feel any gates whatsoever. The bit where the bar comes down. It's all over this side. The pit fits in there a lot freer and it's the only spot where I could feel the gates. So uh, let's have a look and see. It's all set to zeros. So we'll go through and uh, see if we can decode this one. So I'm zoom in. 
So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to start off here trying to feel for the uh, code. So I'm not feeling really anything there. One second. Sorry about that. Nothing on one. Nothing on two. Nothing on three. Not feeling anything. And sorry, something's about to fall off the edge of the bench. I just had to grab it. Not feeling anything. No, on six. All right. There's the gate. I just felt the pick slide into it. So the gate for the first one is on seven. So let's go for six on this. No, that's nine on this one. A bit hard to feel. Let's try. Sometimes it's a bit easier to feel this. But that's a lot better. So let's make sure seven was. Yep, seven's the one with the gate at the top there. Nothing on zero. Nothing on one. Nothing on two. Oop. Nothing on three. Nothing on four. Nothing on five. So when you hit the gate, you will feel the tip of your decoder slide down into the gate or the cutout nothing on eight let's try nine again it's a bit easier than this angle all right I just felt that slide in so you can get on that gate and then I can actually move camera will cooperate can actually move that dial the gate like that so we know that gate's on nine and I just got to get it to go back so we've got seven nine Nothing on nine. Nothing on zero. Alright. There's the gate on one. Try and get it to. Definitely a gate, I can feel it there. So, last one. Nothing on nine. Sorry, I'm probably out of view there. Nothing on zero. Nothing on one. Nothing on two. Alright, there's the gate. As you can see, I was just pushing that dial around using that gate. So, the gates 
on this one are lined up on 7, 9, 1 and 3. So now we've got to work out what the numbers are that will line up with the marks here. So to do that we're going to turn each one one click or one number and then try the shackle. So it's still locked but we know it's 7, 9, 1 and 3 here. So we're going to turn 1 which will give us 9. Turn it 1 which will give us 1. Turn 1 which will give us 3. Turn 1 which will give us 5. Try it again. Nope. So we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, nothing there, 1, 2, 3, 4, no, 1, 2, 3, 4, there we go. There's our numbers, our code, so it's two, four, six, eight. So dig in, don't wait. So that's how you go decoding one of these. Now, just out of curiosity, I'm gonna take the back off this and uh we'll have a quick look. So let me pause this for a second while I unscrew the back and otherwise this video is gonna be like twenty minutes. Oop, wrong button. Alright, so I unscrewed the back, and as you can see, we have our combination just here. And sitting down the back here, this is our spring loaded, or lo the spring loaded locking pull, if you want to call it that, that sits in, allows this shackle to, or the uh, bolt to slide. So we've got cutouts in the bolt here and here so when you slide it forwards and you've got it locked you turn the combination and if I change the first one let's just take them back one number all right now, as you can see, this locking bar has come up and the shackle or the bolt is locked into place. So if I work out, so we've got to go one click that way, one click that way. bit harder when it's uh, <laughs> apart and that dial keeps wanting to come out. Okay, so put that down for a sec. Alright, so I'll turn it one click and then you can probably see that shackle or the locking pull move. You can see it's moving just there. So locked position, unlocked position. Now, let's quickly rip this bit out we can without losing everything should just slide out and get it up and under that bar without damaging it because this is a $28 lock Come on. I know what that where that pin goes because I thought that was how you reset the combination. It sits in there, but it's not. So there's our combination discs and the spring loaded locking pool. Now you're probably wondering where are the gates? Well, as I said, there's none on the top and I could not feel any because this is completely smooth except for a little notch just there. But that is pretty much, there's no gates on this side. They're all on the bottom. And if you look 
closely, and this one on the end is probably the best. You can probably see that this shackle or the locking pull in here has a rise to it. That is where it sits into the cutout for it to spring up. So if we put the wrong combination in and we move the gate, so I'm just trying to do. So you can see it has now pushed that down. Like that. So I'm just going to rotate this one until we can bring the gate that we're feeling up to the top. So this just here, as you can see, my camera will cooperate. That is the gate that I was feeling for. So when I push down on it, I could feel it was all smooth. And then you slide into the gate and it's like a stopper. So you can slide down here, but once you hit that gate, or that little notch that's cut out in here, that is what you're feeling for, that gate. So that, yeah, when I pushed down on it, it was actually causing the dial to move. But uh, that's the inside of the Zenith Pad Bolt Combination Slide Bolt. But um, yeah, for 28 bucks, quite easily defeated really um but yeah bit of a fun pick all right so as always always follow the codes keep locks built legal you know don't get to do anything stupid uh don't forget to check out locksmithtoolbox.com if you're after great equipment at very competitive prices uh, absolutely awesome uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As you know, I try to make two to three to four videos per week, depending on work and everything else that's going on. Uh, don't forget to come and join us on Discord, Extraordinary League of Figures. Cannot recommend that enough. Don't forget, you can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where I put up photos and all the fun stuff that happens around here. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me, you can contact me through any of the social medias on or on Discord, or send us an email at darkartslockpicking at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you. And, um... Yeah, if you like what you see, don't forget to give a thumbs up. And until next time, cheers, guys.